In commission, so I had to practice before the tech talk really comes up, which is, you know, taking care about my hands and my legs and, you know, my, what do they do on the stage and all this stuff. But nevertheless, so um, what I wanted to share today is something which actually is a kind of a story that happened to us. So because I am, as I said in, in the introduction, so I am the researcher in the area of AI. So we do quite a lot of stuff with RWTH also on, you know, intelligent factories, smart grids, intelligent transport, self-driving cars and all this stuff. And if you look around, there is quite little being done of using those technologies in learning. And the problem and the question is why is so? So what, what, was, what was essentially, what essentially brought us into this play was the portal we are running at the, at the JSI, at our department, which is called videolectures.net, where we started to record lectures in, in, uh, at the Institute in 2002. So very early in the, in the, in the ways of, of, of open courseware. And apparently this was um, something that became very interesting, very interesting for all the others because we somehow developed a system that were able to maintain the quality and preserve the quality of the materials we have. And also because we have several different interesting tools that you can attach to the content and do something which is different than is just providing materials. So eventually what happened for us was all this stuff from getting all these big US universities coming to work with us, to the interest from the UNESCO side, to the interest from the European Commission, so that at the end of the day, me and my colleagues, we end up in a crowd of people that actually are doing something else, not artificial intelligence. So the question we had in that time was, and we are doing that for the European Commission since we play with the open data and analytics of the open data. So this is what I did for the European Commission and I showed them this slide, I said, uh, so this is what Europe has done and invested in framework five, framework six, framework seven and Horizon 2020 on open education. And this is just a first short part of all the projects that has been done on open education that are somewhere there, a huge amount of knowledge, huge amount of content, huge amount of competencies that have been lost. So what we thought about was, why don't we make something which would be a funeral? Why don't we just put things together in something which would make sense? So me and Davor went around talking to institutions in Slovenia. Since Slovenia is a small country, we have four major universities. We have like 450 primary schools, 250 secondary schools. There are 200 something kindergartens. So we went to talk to these guys. And we asked them, so, you know, if we go in something like this, which would be a holistic and systemic approach to open education, so what do you think about your role in that? We didn't say, I mean, we are bringing money, we have the idea, we have the project, we have blah, blah, blah. No, we said, what would be your role? What do you think about you as a rector of the university? What will be your role in an open education world? And these guys were telling us, thank God you came around because we need to change. And as Fred said before, the current educational system is not sustainable anymore. Not just not sustainable, it doesn't really fit to what we are dealing with. Because if you want to change something in a traditional educational system, at least in Slovenia, and Slovenia is very similar to Germany, you need five to ten years. In the world we are living right now, five to ten years actually means that we are sending to kids every day to the history classes. We are teaching them history classes. And this is something we thought, we thought, well, why don't we just look at it and try to make it holistically, and as Jan said at the beginning, this is a complex problem. It has political implications, it has cultural implications, it has business style implications, it has a lot of things. If you want to change things fundamentally, you have to do it holistically. And you have to do it from bottom up. So you have to involve all the stakeholders, and this is what we did. So we have right now a, a initiative in Slovenia in which there are all stakeholders involved. Kindergartens, primary schools, secondary schools, universities, lifelong learning, companies, 
So big businesses that are interested in open learning, Ministry of Education, and a lot of NGOs that are dealing with different aspects of, of, of open education. So open community and involving all stakeholders. And this, the driver for us is the need for change. Each of these particular headmasters, teachers that we are talking to directly is saying the same thing. We need to do something because currently, as it is, the system doesn't really work. So the next imp important point is that we said, OK, so what we are missing is that we are not listening to each other. We are not listening to each other and we are listening to the kids. We are not listening to the students. We don't do that. We just think that we know how it should be. And it's not. So listen, share, collaborate, and unconditionally. And of course, if you say, you know, we have an initiative and you go outside to speak to the world, we have this initiative, they had the initiative, we had the program, we have the ideas and so on, everybody will say, okay, there's yet another initiative, yet another strategy, yet another policy. So this is what we said, we don't care about really strategies and policies and everything. We are care about concrete projects that will make results. And concrete projects are there because we want to test things into practice, in the practice, and then to share that to all the others which are interested in going into the same, following the same path. And of course, at the end of the day, you have to have the formal political support. So the last partner we invited into the Initiative for the Ministry of Education, with a special role because you have to have a Ministry of Education when you need to change things in policy level. Because the teachers and the professors will tell you, usually, so, you know, this is just additional work for me to prepare something which will be an open educational resource. It's an additional work. Who will you pay? Huh? Where, are, where are the marks for me? Where, where, how can I be promoted because I'm there very popular at this particular website? So those are the things you have to change and you have to somehow push it from the bottom up. The, the role that was very interesting for us was that Research, National Research Institute, so JSI is like Fraunhofer in, in uh, Fraunhofer Style Institute in, in Germany, is that we are neutral. We are not really educators. We are hardcore researchers doing cool stuff. And we have a good public image. And because we are applying for the, for the money, which is not really Slovenian public money, which are outsourced, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 which is the money coming from the outside, which is, for, the, for example, the European Commission or, or, the, or a commercial project we have, Here you have a different type of communication with the ministry. So this is important. And another important thing is that we are a small, big country. So we are a small country with two million, but we have to have everything like Germany has. And you can imagine that this is very costly. You know, if two million people are paying all the you know, all the, all the subsystems in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a government, then this is costly. But we can sit behind the table and we can discuss things very easily. So this is something which is important when we are dealing with something which we get to the point of it. But, so what we find out till now are three major important things. First is that this is coming into the system. This is what I said already. So we don't really understand about the crowd, about the kids coming into the play. Somebody asked before about the digital literacy, right? Or the literacy as itself. The literacy for these kids is something completely different. The literacy, the digital literacy for these kids is something completely different. You know, commission was asking several times already, you know, digital literacy really means, you know, opening world, uh, doing whatever in Microsoft Office, writing line of codes. Digital literacy for these kids is liking, sharing, collaborating. It's something completely different. We don't understand. And when I'm looking around, this is what is happening. This is a famous game called Minecraft. How many of you know about the Minecraft? One, two. Minecraft is a Lousy game in a graphic sense because it's is a, is a, let's say, one nineteen ninety five age style of graphics. But this is the most downloadable game, and kids are playing it because 
you build these structures brick by brick. One brick, another brick, third brick, fourth brick. And these structures are being built by 200 plus kids, self-organized together without the, any kind of awareness how a project like this should look like. And they find out through the, through the, through the game, through the play, that they have to have a leader, that they have to have the, 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 the quality control manager, that they have to have somebody else that takes care of the community and all this stuff. And it works pretty well without asking us, Daddy, you mean how, how do you do that? This is not a question anymore because they're different. And what they do, they share and they collaborate. They say, oh, all my resources that I dig in because you have to dig in all, all, the, all the mud that you can make bricks out of it. Oh, no problem. All the resources I have, you can use it because we have the common goal. So they have a different approach than we have been learned to. And what they do, they also do something like this, which is a very complex thing. So this thing here actually is in Minecraft built microprocessor, workable, using simple physical and chemical processes, workable. Kids that are actually building that or being involved, 10 years old kids, they know about Boolean algebra in a minute, everything, they can tell you essence of Boolean algebra in 10 years, great. So those are the things that are different. This is, the, this is the usually what we don't think when we talk about the, the education. And the next thing is that open educational resources have been seen in the past as something which was, you know, okay, yeah, so some of the guys are playing with it. Okay, those professors, crazy guys, there's hippie movement, whatever. Okay, let's just leave them play with this stuff and we will see maybe something will happen out or not. Now, this is becoming something serious. And in the last meetings we've been together, so for example in Banff, there were already companies looking at how to get into the play. Because this is not really anymore a simple issue. It's an important movement. However, when you ask teachers, why are you not using OERs? And when you ask professors, why are not you getting into OERs? They will tell you, well, it's too costly, it takes time, and it's click and miss. I don't have time every afternoon to spend 10 hours just to find out the appropriate resource for the next day to prepare for the lecture. Because everything is there in various isolated sites, there are different modalities, so from the text to slides to PDFs to videos to wherever. There are in various formats, you can find everything there. There, in, there is language diversity, so you can have very good resource, which is in Japanese, so what will you do with it? I mean, it's a problem, right? You have unresolved rights, which is what we talked, so the licenses. You don't know really about the licenses because some, some of those guys are putting their, their, their licenses there, some not. And you have different levels of quality. So you don't know what type of the content you will use. And when describe mode of use. So when you look at it, then you say, okay, so what actually is missing, and this is our role, is that we say, well, you know, there are technologies now pretty well developed that can really help solving these issues. And this is AI stack. So this is the AI stack from this, let's say, lower level of statistical machine learning up to reasoning and semantics. So as I said at the beginning, we have these tools implemented for various different purposes usually not for learning. And it's a pity, because they can really help, because those are technologies that understand content. They are not providing content, they are understanding what's written inside. They are language agnostic, they go across the languages. They understand that something is written in Japanese can be translated into German to be then really edited and used for the next day. Those are technologies that are sitting behind the computer understanding the user needs, the behavior, the user modes, the learning behavior that actually is needed then to do the personalization. And those are technologies at the top that are already disrupting now already the existing systems of licenses. 
So we have the application that is running right now in test mode, which is actually an AI that is asking users around questions based on the huge taxonomy and ontology that is behind. So directed questions. So AI is learning from crowd of users, and it's providing the same content back, but it's not using, it's not using documents. It is asking questions and getting answers and remembering that. So if you will proclaim this AI to be an open source, there are no more any issues about IPs. Because this is an AI learning from the crowd, bringing back to the crowd something which is a knowledge and not content anymore. And this is something which is workable prototype. It's not something that will actually be there in five, ten years from now. And if you, if you read papers about, about Watson uh, um, and, all, and the other AI systems, actually everybody are going in that direction. So there is a disruptive element which is there already when we are talking to, to, a, to this machine as to be my body, to be equal. So it's not machine anymore. It's something different. And these kids are using these things already as something different. And you can see that at your home. So this is what we achieved so far, right? Projects, and those are strategic, small, big. So everything is mixed in between. We have first policy, policy initiative, so that actually what we did, we provided to the ministry now the first set of guidelines that what has to be changed in order to this to be really operative. We have followers knocking on the door. So as you see, in some of these countries are actually asking us to come to teach them, uh, not to teach them, to explain what we are doing and how we are doing and what were our approach. So last week, me and our we have been explaining this to the State Department in the US. So, you know, the, we, Europe is not lagging anymore. We, we have something here which might be interesting for all the others because we have the multicultural aspects they don't have. And this is something which is very appealing and very important. And what is the most important thing is that we have this established this creative, open and enjoyable atmosphere. So these meetings are very, very interesting. So it's, it's very lively. You go, we, we have a meeting at the kindergarten, next day we have a meeting at the university, third day we go the, at the company and so on. Usually it's like being open, share unconditionally. So there is no no when we are speaking about it. So no, it's about yes, cool, maybe next day. So just to show you uh, some, of the, some of the screenshots. Um, so this is um, something that actually started already before the initiative. So those are, uh, those are subjects and those are grades. And here, are, here we are strategically putting uh, contents, which is OER for the primary and secondary schools. So we are going OER in primary and secondary schools. So this looks like this. So those are actually um, the textbooks, e-textbooks, but interactive e-textbooks. Uh, we have plenty of other, other, um, other libraries that are, that are appearing around because of the, because of the initiative. We have um, quite a lot of universities now getting online, and of course the, the, our portal. So there are several things I can show you in real life, you can check, so there are links available. Uh, so strategically means that we have the idea how to really meet things, meet, uh, move things forward in a, global, in a global sense. This is just to show you the core group. So those are the, the initiators and those are the ones who are right now the elected representatives from all the stakeholders. So you can see it's quite a lot of uh, 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 entities. So there are now, there is now government coming to us, talking to us that they want to have open education for the complete governmental sector. Because again, it's cheaper than buying books and having something which will be courses around, around Slovenia. We have quite a lot of associated institutions interesting in working with us. So there's also Germany there. And I think it's, it's Aachen also, I guess. <coughs> Uh, so I just tried to put them in a map, so this looks like quite impressive. But eventually, 
what I wanted to tell you is that something that we set up in Slovenia is a test bed. It's a test bed in which all the stakeholders are trying to get into an open education environment. And we make mistakes, and of course we make best practices. And the idea of Slovenia is that we go, you talk to Slovenian people, you call your friend in Slovenia, you ask him, you start to working with him in the area of open education. So this is what we want to do. And that's it. Thank you.